Desert Moon. I like Desert Moon, the solo one. That was always a good, good, sappy 80s song. Remember that? I don't remember You don't that. remember Desert Moon I from don't. the 80s? Oh, God, yeah. That was on my mixtape with uh, Gregory Abbott, Shake You Down. The 80s were kind of a blur for me, I'll be honest. <laughs> so Dennis is in town Saturday. He's going to be at MGM Grand. Uh, 40th anniversary of the Grand Illusion. And we were looking up some. I, I, I love, there's this great thing. It's the Detroit Concert Database. If you go there, oh. you can look up any act and when they were here. I found out some of the dates for him. First one that I found for Styx was interesting was Styx and Roxy Music. They opened for Roxy Music what? at Kobo. At Kobo in Kobo? 75. At Kobo? And then in 78, they were playing here. They did a bunch of gigs. One of Joe Lewis, one of them. And one of the opening bands is one of those one-hit wonders from the 80s, Chilliwack. Okay, what was their big hit, though? Gone, because... gone, gone, you've been gone so long. And trust me, you either know it or you don't. It's one of those Oxo Whirly Girl, Michael Stanley Band kind of one-hit wonder things. And then 79, which we're going to talk to him about, that's 40 years ago. 40 years ago. 40. April Wine, open for him. Oh, okay. It's a pretty cool double bill. So, yeah, Dennis will be along in a second here. Um, and I'm curious to see what he says about this, because the grand illusion, the more I've been reading about this in the album, you know the song Angry Young Man, You're Fooling Yourself by Styx, right? You're just fooling, yeah. Right. Tommy Shaw is singing the lead vocals on that, not Dennis. What I read, and if it's true, that Tommy wrote the song about Dennis, because they thought Dennis, when he joined the band, was a angry young man. Ah. Oh. And then later on, Tommy kind of embraced the fact that it was really about him. And then Grand Illusion, the song, is Dennis writing about how pissed off he was because they didn't have another hit after Lady. And they had two albums that didn't do anything. But that's, I, I understand that. I, I'm still surprised that they didn't have another big hit after. Well, I think he is too, but that's like he's, ta- so that's why it's got that whole theme to it. But, and of course, it always comes up. I don't know if we'll have time to mention it or not. Everyone talks about Mr. Roboto because, you know, that's the song that broke the band up. Although Styx was doing it in tour last year. Yeah, they did play it on tour. Remember, we talked about it, and we were posting videos of them actually performing it because it hadn't been performed on stage for, what, like 30-something years? Right. Yeah, yeah, it's been a while Yeah, since they did that one. So I, I don't know if he felt vindicated by that or not. Hmm. He should. He should. I know him and JY, it's, 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 it's always still a contentious relationship. And he Googles himself all the time. He Googles himself? Always checking what's going on. He's, uh, he's, he'll, he'll openly admit it. He Googles sticks. He Googles himself. He's always checking on those things. Do you Google yourself? Uh, not all the time, but occasionally I will, absolutely. I'm scared. I'll Google the show. I'll go. Well, you're scared to see what you find out? Yeah. See, there was a basketball coach, I think, for Ohio State named Jim O'Brien. So some, And he was with the Celtics, too. So sometimes I'll get that one. You know what? There's only, like, one other Aaron Formulan that I know of, and this is a, actually a funny story. Um. She is also in South Africa where I used to live with my husband because he's from South Africa. Right. One day I couldn't get into my Yahoo Mail. Somebody had requested, or uh, you know, like the security because they had forgotten their password and stuff, and I couldn't get in my mail. Then all of a sudden I get a message on Facebook from another Erin Vermeulen apologizing that she reset my password on my (laughs) mail. She's Erin Vermeulen at gmail.com. And I'm Aaron Vermeulen at yahoo.com. And she had logged into the wrong one. So we're actually friends on Facebook now. Because of that. Uh huh. Wow. Isn't that wild? That is kind of weird. Yeah, I don't. Mm, yeah, you're the only one I know like that with real. So we're waiting on DY right now, or Dennis D. I don't want to call him DY because that'd be bad because we called James Young JY. Whew, almost screwed that up there. Don't want to do that, man. So he's going to join us. Saturday, MGM Grand. They're doing the whole tour uh, at the event center, which is actually a cool place to see a show. It's intimate. The way they got it set up there. If you've I haven't ever been, seen anything there it's yet. It's cool. That's where we saw uh, Clarissa Shields had a fight there. Oh, that's right. She, yeah. yeah. Okay. And you guys have seen it, some of the ballrooms up there and stuff. They do the gallery and stuff, the big car thing. So uh, we're doing that. Saturday, everybody, again, on Facebook, we're on Facebook Live, too, so you guys can join in in the conversation Hello. this morning. Um, seven below right now as we're doing this. Seven below. Wind chill in the 30s, negative 30. Coldest day for January 30th in recorded history. So we broke well, the record. Well, si- since 1951. Well, that's what I mean. It broke yeah. the record. Yeah. yeah so yeah. it's coldest day. It's the coldest day. So all the people who are grumpy on Facebook last night going, when I was when I was your age, we went like, yeah, it was, you never had anything like this. The kids today are going to throw it in your face in 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> Seven below, though, man. I was surprised by the... I get the school thing. We got a call from the school at noon yesterday. Noon? That they, noon yesterday they had canceled for, for Wednesday and Thursday in Waterford. They pulled the plug early. Well, you know what? It's probably better to kind of 
be ahead of the situation because parents have to make arrangements for their kids and stuff like that when there is a snow day and you have to it's a big headache right yeah more and more people you get you get two parent families or even one parent families that are working how, how do they manage that stuff it's crazy um but we had the school closings obviously you know i mean we, we had you know all the different businesses and a lot of people taking half days. My wife was out last night. I don't want to say the name of the store, but they closed the store early because of the storm. She went out shopping and they closed the store early because of the cold. That's not the first time I've heard that. I, I, that's That was a new one to me. Um, and then the other thing was, but today though, we had a buddy, it was a Rocky. He was on his way to the post office where he works to find out that there's no mail service today. They did. The United States Postal Service canceled mail service for our area and most of Michigan today because of the frigid temperatures. Okay. They pulled the plug on that one. And then, you know, you've got all the other stuff, the, the events going around town. It's going to be for the next couple of days. Um, it, it's, man, it is crazy cold. Uh, Ryan, God bless him, went out there to move our a car that I'm reviewing. He pulled it up front and he thought he was fine because he had the warmth from here. <laughs> and then when he said when he got out of the car, and walked back up to the station building. He was freezing his you-know-what off. So, is that Dennis? Are we good? That's Dennis. Brian's in there talking to him. Um, again, MGM Grand is going to be this Saturday. Grand Illusion, the 40th anniversary tour. Ladies and gentlemen, the man that had Chilliwack open for him in 1978, Dennis DeYoung. Yes, thank you, and I still have heartburn. Uh. <laughs> I was actually sitting here singing, Gone, 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 she's been gone so long. Is Honestly, that... God, chili whack. That was like slapping me with a dead fish. I had a... <laughs> chili whack. I remember the name. Yeah. Uh, th- is that their song? Yeah, it was it. Gone, gone, gone. We, we love going through the Detroit. We have, a, we have an amazing concert database here in Detroit, Dennis, and we love to go back and look at the gigs. Now, the first big gig that I found for you guys was Sticks. You opened for Roxy Music in 75 here. Cobo Hall. Yeah, see? It, yep, Cobo. And then... Yeah. I, I never forget it. Um, I didn't know who Roxy Music was, and they looked at us and they said, "Who the hell is that?" Anyway, um, we uh, we played there, and that was like you know that was like stepping into the big time, buddy. You know, the, you know, because we, we had never we rarely played places like Cobo Hall, but you know, and 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 went great. So we, then we came back. I think we headlined the Ford Theater. Remember that place? Absolutely. Oh yeah. Yeah yeah yeah. And then um, the one that I found though, for the Grand Illusion anniversary of the album tour. 70 wine what a double bill yeah i after we had the chili we'd had some wine that you know the- <laughs> exactly ah! we got, if we could get bread you would have covered the whole thing if yeah. you could have got david gates you would have been all set dennis you should have been on the radio <laughs> <laughs> how are you i'm uh listen i'm the envy of millions so i better not complain i've had a charmed life not that I didn't work hard and have some talent, but let me tell you something. I'm going to come to I'm going to come to Detroit. And you know what they're going to tell me? What's that? They're going to tell me. They're going to thank me for coming to Detroit to play music for them, I, as if I'm there with the little sisters of the poor. You know, I mean, it's an amazing thing. People thank me for the uh, uh, the, the music that for them meant so much to them. I, it, when I was doing it as a kid, making it up as I, as I was going along, I just pretended like I knew it was. I was doing something. I had no idea that at 72 years old, people would be lining up to come, not even just see me in the band I was in, but come to see me. You know, it's, I just feel, I just feel really lucky that that happened. Well, and, and, and your live album is fantastic. The, the, the one in Los Angeles, it's available on your website, obviously, but my God, it just holds up. I don't know if you, who you made a deal with, but your voice sounds just in great form, Dennis. Well, thank you so much. I, um, <laughs> <I've> been... <laughs> Yeah, you know, hey, 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 are you ready? Stand yeah. back. Lady, when you're with me, I'm smiling. And I'm, that's early in the morning here. But hey, it, you're not doing it like Jerry Lewis. That would be you for that song. It was originally written for him. Was it? <laughs> it was originally called Frau Leuven. Frau that's Leuven, it. lady, nice woman. It's pretty. All right, now I gotta ask questions. Since you're doing the Grand Illusion, the 40th anniversary album tour, um, something I had read a couple of years ago, Dennis, was that the song "The Grand Illusion" you wrote it because you were frustrated about the last two albums since the song "Lady," and that was kind of your mindset that you were you were ex- you were expressing your frustration with not being able to break through with another hit. Is that true? No, but I, I wish I knew who told it. It was um, it was simply my statement about how. 
um, consumerism which drives the country. Um, we have all these people who advertise to us all the time uh, trying to get us to buy something, which I included uh, ourselves in that whole thing because I say, you know, welcome to the Grand Delusion. Come on in and see what's happening. Pay the price. Get your tickets for the show. Pay the price. Get your – the stage is set. The band starts playing. Suddenly your heart is pounding, wishing secretly you were a star. But don't be fooled by the radio. I was telling them. TV or magazines, they'll show you photographs of how your life should be. And I told them, those are just somebody else's fantasies. So if you think your life is complete confusion because your neighbors got it made, remember it's a grand illusion. And deep inside, we're all the same. I was saying something about consumerism, and the grand illusion I was referring to was, you know, how advertisers present a false uh, a false reality to get you to buy stuff, and I was including my, uh, myself in there. That here we are up on this stage, but we are a grand delusion as as well. You know, we're, we're just like you when you strip it all down. Oh my God, people are tuning on, are tuning off all over Detroit now. No, no, you went no, deep. No, that yeah. was that was intense. That was you made me thinking. I'm gonna go get Jonathan Livingston Seagull and drink a latte afterwards, Dennis. That was some deep <laughs> thought, man. Oh, well, I was a young man. I, I don't know what other, what other rock band was telling the fans, hey, by the way, don't buy into all this. But I, I, that was my whole idea behind it. And so the other story is not as good, is it? No, <laughs> no, no, no. Yours is so much better than that. Yeah, so much better than that one. Well, there, that, that's, that's what happened. And the guys jumped on board. I, I wrote that song. I said, this is what I'm shooting for. And then J.Y. wrote a song about Miss America and then Tommy Fooling Yourself and Man in the Wilderness. And, you know, so what we're going to be doing up there was we're going to play the entire the album in its entirety, start to finish, take a break, come back, and then play, you know, Lady, Babe, uh, Best of Times, Mr. Mr. Roboto, Renegade, Blue Collar Man. Mr. Did I say Roboto? Yeah, Grand. Yeah. I, we're going to play all the other hits, so it's, it's, it's really a jam-packed night. Now, this um, solo project that you've been working on, I read somewhere that you were working with um, Jim from Survivor. Yes, uh, Jim Peterick. He actually lives three blocks from me. Um, we're all in prison here in Joliet, Illinois. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> three blocks away from me, and uh, the great purple one. Uh, this is the first time we've ever collaborated, but um, it's going really well. And uh, in fact, I did a. We wrote a song together uh, for his world stage album that's coming out in, in a month or so. We just finished the video, and it, it's great fun, you know. And uh, it, 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 I, I wasn't. Uh, we coll- I collaborated in stick, of course. But in my solo career, mostly I've just written my own songs, and of course there'll be about five of them on my album that are just me. But he and I, we wrote about seven or eight songs together, and I, you know, I'm, I'm I'm pretty excited about what's what's going on. But if I'm not, who the hell will be? There you go, <laughs> Dennis <laughs> Young with us Saturday night MGM Grand Event Center. It's going to be the Grand Illusion 40th Anniversary Album Tour. So when Styx goes on stage now, in in their in their uh, when they did Mr. Roboto, was that a peace offering to you, or would you consider that maybe justification that you were right? Back then, I don't know if, it, if we're even at a point now to discuss it 20 years later, right and wrong. Well, I think, I, what I think is, it was, certainly wasn't a peace offering because they've made that clear in every interview. Oh, no, we don't want him back. Oh, my God. And, um, but, listen, people love Mr. Roboto. Millions of people love it, you know. And so when we first did it, it was really one song in our doggone career, and it was it was behind a concept album. And some of called the proggy guys, you know, the people who love the Grand Illusion and Pieces of Eight, and I don't blame them, I love them. When they heard that, they thought, you know, that uh, what happened to Sticks, where'd they go? And they went off the deep end. But really, the deep end brought in a whole, as, as Jay White has said in many interviews, he was, uh, he, he, I guess he stands corrected now, that, um, you know, a whole new a group of fans have come, came along with Kill Ryan and, and loved that song and stuck with the band. So, you know, it's, very, it's, it's difficult sometimes. The real reason behind all that nonsense was we made an album. We tried something very different. It was my idea. So, you know, if you don't like it, blame me. If you liked it, I have something to do with it. But really, what really hurt the band at that time was Tommy. During that tour, the Kilroy was here to quit the band at the height of Styx's popularity. And he went off to pursue a solo career for almost four years. Right. And I didn't want to go on without him. I thought it was that Tommy Shaw and I were vital to that band together, and the other three guys wanted me to replace him, and I refused to do it. So, um, and I believe I was right. So, when it, when it comes right down to it, had we stayed together, if Tommy hadn't quit, 
um, we would have come back with a, another album, probably more like all the other albums people had come to love us for. But it, it was it was just one of those compliments of things. But so for the guys now, 20 years at, later, after all the stuff they'd said in in the ensuing 20 years negatively about that, they decided to play it. And why do you think they did that? Because you were right. Because you were right. <laughs> right. I, I, no, I wasn't saying that. Be, I, what, what was right were the fans. That's what I'm. Yeah. That's what I mean. I mean the the path you were going to what you did. We love that song, and we we. It's just one of those that. 30 years from now, 40 years from now, you're going to play it again anyway. I mean, it's always going to be part of, uh, it's going to thread through our culture. It, it, it was the perfect song for the time. Dennis? Um, yes, it's, going to, it's going to live on be, uh, beyond the others because I say the line, the problem's plain to see too much technology, machines to save our lives, machines dehumanize. If anybody doesn't feel that way today, I, I'd like to know who they are. Even, Man. look, at even the big shots in, in, in the tech companies are scared to death of AI. So all I can say is, uh, it, even if you don't want to know the deeper meanings of songs, if you can hum along with them and you can dance, you gotta give you got to give them an 82 on bandstand. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Now I'm going to be I'm gonna be flipping records all day, writing yeah. numbers on them there. Dennis, we will see you Saturday night at MGM Grant. It is great talking to you. I just love the energy and everything, and you sound an amazing voice. So this is going to be a great time Saturday night in the Motor City. Thank you guys so much. Tell the kids to go to my Facebook page. I write all that stuff. You'll have a laugh in the morning. And then uh, if you do get time today, put up the YouTube of Chili Whack, Gone, 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 and say, I, I, they opened for me once. <laughs> I'm just going to put up the whack part. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get blocked on Facebook. Don't do it. They'll get you. I can't eat chili anymore. Oh, yeah. that's yeah. Join the club, man. Dennis, great talking to you. Be well. Thanks, guys. All right. There he goes, Dennis DeYoung. How about that? Wow. That was the best explanation about, about, about Mr. Roboto I have ever heard. And I've, I've, we've talked to him a lot. That's crazy. That is an interesting, and the Tommy Shaw part of it, I never... Never knew that either. We knew I, Tommy went solo, and then it was uh, Damn Yankees. Remember when he went with Ted Nugent when and all that stuff? Nugent. Yeah, 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 later on. But yeah, Tommy Shaw went solo. Wow. But, but didn't um, JY acknowledge recently that DeYoung contributed far more to the band than what he was given credit for. Aren't right. they kind of... No, I don't think they'll ever... You're never going to see them. It's not going to... It's almost like a Van Halen thing. It's still... Uh, I don't know. You guys read into it there. It sounded to me like he was kind of like... And, and we weren't just saying that because we were doing the interview with him. The live album from a couple of years ago in L.A., Holy crap. It's phenomenal. His voice is like right there and he nails it. So it's well, going to be a great show. Well, you heard him on there. Just throw out a little bit of lady. You're like, oh my gosh, you're 71 and like. He's killing it. Yeah. He's killing it. So thanks to our friends at MGM for setting that up. All right, we're going to wrap it up because uh, Jolene's going to get in here next. You guys be well. Thanks.